listening to Tucker Carlson, he has really interesting ways of putting things. Take a listen. Peter Walker. Like so many in finance and consulting, Walker spent an awful lot of his career doing business in China. We have no idea how much money he made doing that. We do know that along the way, Walker internalized a lot of the attitudes of China's totalitarian government. During our interview, we asked Walker what he thought of China's lockdowns. Here's what he said. Now, credible reports suggest that Chinese authorities locked people in their apartments and left them to die. We know they snatched people off the street and threw them into police vans. God knows where they went. That's the quarantine that you think they deserve high praise for. Why? Well, I, I think, Tucker, if you just look at the results, okay, so I, I know there's always going to be questions about exactly what the, the numbers are, but I think the harsh action that they took, given the scale of China and the number of big cities in it, was exactly what they needed to do to be able to prevent the outbreak from going any further. And the reality is, the outbreak hasn't gone much beyond Wuhan. So the secret police kidnapping citizens off the street, authorities locking people in their apartments from the outside until they starved. Just look at the results. All of that, Walker said, was, quote, exactly what they needed to do. This is the view of one of America's most prominent business leaders. He did not seem ashamed to say it. In fact, later in our interview, Walker suggested that American authorities could have done the same things in New York if only they'd gotten an earlier start. Kind of a shame they didn't. Your jaw dropped watching it. But here's the striking thing. Nobody seemed to notice that he said it. Walker didn't find himself on the front page of the New York Times the next morning. No one in American business denounced him. He went home to bed, and that was it. Totalitarianism does not shock us anymore. Maybe that's because all of a sudden, it's all around us. You may have seen this tape already. If not, you've likely seen many more like it in the past few weeks. Two armed officers arrive at a family's home in Wisconsin. Someone has reported the mother to police for arranging a play date for her daughter. That's now a crime. Here's what happened next. Are you aware that we're in a stay-at-home order right now? Uh, yeah, obviously. By the government? Yes, I Wisconsin. am aware. Okay, you're aware of that? I am aware. So I don't need to explain that to you? Why are you here? Because your daughter is going to play at other people's home and you're allowing it to happen. Stop having your kid go by other people's home. Are we done here? No, we're not. Okay. Middle initial and your last name. I'm not giving it to you. I haven't done anything wrong. Okay. I Perfect. Got we got it. Yeah, okay. And that'll be documented too, that you're uncooperative. You are uncooperative. That will be documented. Notice the tone they strike with this mother. They are standing on her property, uninvited, hectoring her about the so-called crime of allowing her daughter to play outside the house. They're not apologizing for this. They're not embarrassed to be carrying out an order that has no basis in science. They are utterly self-confident. They treat her with pure contempt like a peasant. And later, the Calumet County Sheriff's Department posted an account of what happened on their Facebook page. In it, they refer to that mother's mobile home six times. Just, you know, she lives in a mobile home. Oh, just a prole, just a peasant. Shut up and obey. Who cares what she thinks? They believe they have the right to do that. The question is, where exactly do they get that right? That's a good question. It's a question that we are strongly discouraged from asking. The short answer is governors told them they could. Never in American history have politicians been more powerful than they are now. Effectively, they are gods. In the state of Maine, for example, Governor Janet Mills now has the power to suspend any law she doesn't like. She can seize any state resource she feels like seizing. She can force any citizen or all citizens from their home. She can do all of this for as long as she wants, as long as she believes Maine is in a state of emergency. In fact, there's virtually nothing that Janet Mills can't now do. Many governors now have these powers. J.B. Pritzker is the governor of Illinois. On Monday, Pritzker did his best to explain why his word is now law in the state. It has to be law, he explained. Otherwise, thousands would die. The stay-at-home order has prevented tens of thousands of illnesses and thousands of deaths. History will remember those who put politics aside to come together to keep people safe. It will also remember those who so blindly devoted to ideology and the pursuit of personal celebrity that they made an enemy of science 
and of reason. I just paused that for a split second. This governor actually says that you are you have made yourself an enemy of science. Wow. In three sentences, Governor Pritzker framed himself as a leader of historic statue. Those who doubt his decrees are, quote, enemies of science and reason, enemies of civilization itself, mm. enemies of the state. Two days later, on Wednesday, this Wednesday, it emerged that Pritzker's own wife, who has her own state employees, was one of these people. His wife apparently had violated the lockdown herself. Governor Pritzker was asked about this. Here's how he responded. What is your response to people who say the stay-at-home order and non-essential travel bans aren't being abided by your family? I believe there's a report from Illinois Rising Action that says that she recently traveled to Florida. Well, first of all, I want to say that in politics, it used to be that we kept our families out of it. You know, my official duties have nothing to do with my family. What? So I'm just not going to answer that question. It's inappropriate, and I find it reprehensible, honestly, that... that uh, reprehensible he finds it reprehensible is this governor out of his mind his wife gets to leave the state but you do not that reporter wrote a story about it yeah how dare someone cover that asking about whether or not jb pritzker's own family is obeying the order that your family is morally obligated to follow is quote inappropriate Mm. Indeed, the governor says it is reprehensible. How dare you? It would be very useful in moments like this to have an independent media. News organizations exist. He says you need an independent media. He is with Fox. So is it that Tucker Carlson is just so, so tough he can just say and do whatever he wants? I don't know. I, I would still say it's part of just creating sides. Uh, but let, let's just continue. Let's continue. As to, to hold the powerful to account. Here we have the powerful acting with no accountability at all. None. In our news media, they are cheering it on. Besotted fangirls. No abuse is too grotesque for them. No talking point is too stupid to repeat. Reporters will do whatever they are told. They are all in. MSNBC recently sent a camera crew to document one of the latest and most Orwellian developments in America's descent into Chinese-style social control. Barking drones that harangue citizens from the air. MSNBC was delighted by it. Elizabeth, New Jersey is now using drones to spread the life-saving message. You are not immune to this virus. Move away from each other, commands the state of New Jersey. Break it up! Your God-given right to free assembly has been suspended indefinitely. Back inside, proles, or you will face the consequences. MSNBC applauds this as if it's all completely normal. In fact, it is, they tell us, a life-saving message. Handmaidens to the corona security state. You see the way he refers to MSNBC as being the ones that say this. As if... Fox News doesn't have their version of this being okay. So he's part of the left and the right paradigm where you pick a color, you pick a size, very much like the Bloods and the Crips. Bloods can't hang out with Crips, Crips can't hang out with Bloods, and Republicans can't hang out with Democrats, and Democrats can't hang with Republicans. It's all about picking these sides because the more they have sides then the harder it will be for us to unite but to their credit at least msnbc put it on television most outlets don't even bother to cover stories like this the other day prosecutors in new jersey charged nine people for daring to participate in a jewish wedding in their backyard a few months ago that would have made the news for 250 years, Americans have enjoyed the unfettered right to practice their faith as they choose. Now they don't. It happened overnight. Last month, Christians across the country were legally prohibited from celebrating Easter in their own churches. The national media barely noted it. How exactly is this happening? Well, it turns out that's not clear. Strangely, not very many people have asked. 
Politicians have no right to do any of this. They cannot make it illegal for people to go to religious services. The Constitution of the United States expressly prohibits that. The words could not be clearer. The First Amendment explicitly prevents government from making any law that inhibits the exercise of religious faith. That's not a detail or a footnote. It is a cornerstone of our history and of our legal system. Millions of people, probably your ancestors, fled to this country from around the world precisely because our Bill of Rights gave them this guarantee. It's why this country was founded. And in a moment, it's gone. How? Where did politicians get the authority to do this? Because some elderly, power-drunk epidemiologist told them to do it? Mm. That's not how our system works. It can't work that way. Occasionally, you hear someone complain about this. Some lonely, civil libertarian will fret that we may be on a slippery slope toward losing our rights. If only. We're already there. We've sure. slid to the bottom of that slope. Mm -hmm. Our rights are gone. No one has explained how politicians are allowed to do this. Where's the authority come from? How can they override the Constitution? Nobody seems to care. They're too afraid. But if you think this moment is scary, consider what might come next. Now that we've ceded all authority in the country to our political leaders, what can't they do? What are the limits to their power? Hmm. That's not a theoretical question. It's not an argument over philosophy or political theory. It is the most practical possible question. The answer will define where this country goes next. What can't politicians do in the name of public health? As wow. it stands, politicians won't let people worship or work or go to school or see their aging parents. They place the nation under house arrest. That's happening today, right now. But let's say we all get more afraid. What then? What couldn't they start doing? Could they in Just wanted to say that this fruit stand just opened back up two days ago. It's the first fruit stand back on Canal Street. As you can see, they kind of not on Canal Street. They more in the block. Um, but it's good to see, you know, a little bit of life back on Canal. Turn people? Seriously. You not going to answer that dismissed as ludicrous the possibility that propaganda spewing drones would be hovering above. Now we have them. So what's next? What can't they do? Let's draw a line at some point. Yeah. Last week we interviewed a longtime partner at the consulting. So I find this to be a really great Tucker Carlson episode. See, we have to recognize that he is part of the left-right fight and the separating of the people. But that still doesn't take away from what he's saying. We're talking about you cannot go into your church and pray to your God. But wasn't there, isn't there a time that in this country they have preachers that are passing snakes around their children and push the beliefs that if you be, if God loves you or you believe enough, you won't get bit. We allow that to happen. So why isn't it that we're not allowing people to walk into that church? In other words, why aren't we? Why are we allowing people to create laws that destroy every single aspect of us? The Bill of Rights and all that kind of stuff is such an important. It needs to be, I think the word is revised. It needs to be, it's like every part of that Bill of Rights has been destroyed. Been totally destroyed. And we are just taking it. Why are we taking it? What are we truly afraid of? Why are we so afraid of dying? Why are we so afraid of losing our homes and why are we so afraid of our children seeing their parents believe in something and fight for something why is humanity such pussycats why why are we such 
pussy cats. Why are we willing to give the authority of our lives over to other human beings? These are humans, man. These are humans like us. They don't have anything special. They don't. They eat like us. They sleep like us. They bleed like us. The one thing that they do is they don't think like us. Why don't we... Excuse me. <coughs> Why don't we recognize... Our power. Why don't we do that? Why don't we recognize our power as humanity, as humans? Is it has it always been this way? Have human beings always been this easily manipulated? I, it makes me sad. really truly saddens me just how pussycat we are. What is wrong with us? Why are we allowing people to have so much authority over us? To rule over us as if we're just like this group of people that like how did they do like, what? I, I'm just confused. How did they do it? Why are people so afraid? Why are people so damn afraid when the reality of it is is just that no one should have the authority over us. No one should be able to say, yo, hey, you can't walk that way because it's dangerous. You know, I know when you go to the Grand Canyon, there's these uh, trails. And before you hit the trails, there's these guards and rails that are up. And these rails and these guards are up to basically protect you from falling down, let's say a 10 foot, a 10 foot or a 20 foot cliff, you know? And what that does is it shows you that there's like a massive amount of people that want to look over this edge and they want to take pictures or they put up these like, you know, barriers. But they're like only about four feet tall and you can actually even slide in between the barriers. And it's like all these decks all around. Like they built these amazing decks all over the national parks and forests. They have all these decks overlooking these amazing, incredible views. And they also have these signs. And these signs all tell you that beyond this point, you're on your own. So I don't have a problem with government. And I don't have a problem with telling people, listen, there is something out there that is killing people and we are, people are dying. So what we would like you to understand is that there should be some sort of time period where you can like uh, quarantine yourself or don't step over this line here because, you know, this, this you can get hurt. But... The great thing about being an American is that the fence is only four feet tall and you can slide in between them and you can just take your damn chances. You know? And then if something happens to you and you got to call for help, they charge you for that. You got to pay for the helicopter. You got to pay for the gasoline of the helicopter. You got to pay for your gauze, all that. If they drop a rope trying to freaking get you out of there, you got to buy that rope. See, that's the America that I like. Look at this guy balancing the ball on the head. 
Hey, you! Yes, sir. <laughs> He's having a good life right there, boy. That was cool. No, no, come on, come on, I got you. Get it. That guy was trying to tell me to go ahead. Nah, you're a pedestrian. I yield for pedestrians. Forget about it. So now, you know, we give all this power to these, to these people, these human beings. These are humans. We allow them to destroy all that is great about America. Go to the Grand Canyon. If you're with your family, don't worry. It's going to be hard for them to fall off this cliff. But if you want to go down, go down. If you want to kill yourself watching the sunset over at the Grand Canyon, you have that right in this country. And they've taken that away, talking about they're going to save us. But in between that, they're using the police to enforce totalitarian rules. They're using the police. And you heard the cops and they told the lady, I'm going to write down that you were not cooperative. Isn't the whole point of dealing with the police to understand your rights? You do not have to cooperate with the police in their investigation of you. That's what the Fifth Amendment is all about. Remaining silent and not allowing the police to gather any information that will lead them to the arrest of you, the conviction of you, and any form of you being imprisoned, you do not have the right to assist in that. At what point is it that we're gonna not, when are we gonna wake up? When are we gonna say, yo, nah, I'm going to the park. And no, governor, we're not listening to you. All these governors are telling you to put on the mask, but they won't even wear it themselves. All these governors are telling you to stay home, but they won't stay home. And neither will their family members stay home. Why is that? Because you're not in on it. You are the public, and the public is not worth anything to them. We're just cannon fodder in, today, in today's war. I say do not be afraid to share a video. You see, you don't have to storm the castle anymore. You don't have to storm the castle. But what you can do is you can share videos. You can speak out in the comment section in their live. They are reading the live and you can put it out there because let me let me tell you they know what you they know they hear everything you're saying it's not just alexa and siri that are listening the phone in itself it's a listening tracking device and don't get it twisted it is being used but they like that you're silent they love that you're silent oh my god the fact that you just keep watching 
Tucker Carlson and all the CNN and all this other stuff. They know everything you're looking at. But it's time to start sharing. It's time to start saying in the comment section, this is BS. I don't appreciate it. I'm not, this is not cool what you've done. You don't have to storm the castle, but you can't sit around and be afraid. And for the Bible people, what about that passage? Is it is it Luke? Luke talks about how, what does Luke talk about? Luke says, that if you try to not be killed, those who try to be killed, I can't remember. I can't remember at the moment, but it has to do with those who try not to be killed will be killed. And those that try to be killed or fight to be killed will survive. Something to that effect. Just think about it. I appreciate you. I appreciate you uh, very, very much. If you are so kindly to be part of the value for value system, where if you feel a little bit enlightened, like Star would say, or if you feel like you've been um, entertained to some degree, if you feel that you've come away from this with something, if you enjoyed the ride, if you enjoy maybe listening to some Tucker Carlson that you never thought you would do that ever before, or maybe you are a fan and you're glad to see that I did that, I say hit the cash up. Dollar sign Elvis Rosenberg. Hit the Venmo, Elvis Rosenberg. You are appreciated. Boom.